Hello internet and welcome to Codepick. In this video we will be going through what is Dino, what is it trying to solve and should you be using Dino on your next project. I hope I got you excited so let's get started. Welcome back guys, Dino has without a doubt taken over the dev community and there is one question that everyone has been throwing around, will Dino replace Node.js? So to better answer this question, let's head over to the Dino's official website dino.land to get to know more about it. As you guys can see, it clearly states that Dino is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. Okay. But this definition does sound familiar, right? In my other tab, if I have Node.js official website open, and if we take a look at it for a second, it says Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. Yes, that means Dino is similar to Node.js but with extra features. Well, I would like you to look at it this way. You can assume Node.js as Charmander and Dino as Charmelon. Both do pretty much the same thing, but the latter has evolved and it offers some additional benefits. So you might be wondering, when Node.js is being actively developed, why did someone come up with this crazy idea of building a new runtime? If they had some issues with Node.js, they could as well go on and request a new feature or a fix for an existing problem on GitHub, right? Plain and simple. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Dino is built by the same guy who built Node.js, Ryan Dahl. So the reason why Ryan took the serious step of building a new runtime from scratch was when he was building Node.js, there were some decisions on the design pattern and the structure of the code that was taken abruptly. Looking back at those decisions now, he feels he could have done a better job and taken better design decisions. You might be thinking, oh, okay. Why not take some time and try to implement those design decisions on Node.js itself? Well, that was an opinion if Node.js was not being run on around 10 million devices and changing the underlying architecture of Node would impact so many devices in so many different ways that it would not be possible to handle all the scenarios. So the logical thing for Ryan to do is give us developers an option of choosing between Node.js and Dino. So we could choose a runtime that fit our need. Now that we have an overview of what is Dino and how Dino came into existence, let's look back at some of Dino's selling points. Secure by default, no file, network or environment access unless explicitly specified. So when I first started using Node and NPM Package Manager, I had this doubt. What happens if someone uploads a malicious script into our Node package? Because a node package by default has access to our internal file system and all the processes. It's like forcefully giving someone access to our file system even if they're not asking for it. And it's very bad if you think about it. When you install a node package, you don't have much control over what the package does. So that is why we are always recommended to search for package that have a good rating and are actively being developed and funded. Even then, it's a risk the developer is taking by using those packages. This exact drawback is what Dino intends to solve. If I jump over to my code editor, where I have written out a small program that starts up a server on port 8000 and prints hello world on the screen when someone tries to access it. Don't worry about any of the syntax for now. We will get a deeper understanding of it in the future videos by building some cool projects. But for now, let's try running this and see what the result will be. To run a Dino file, all you need to do is Dino run file name. And in this case, it will be Dino run Dino example onets And if I hit return, as you can see, it failed to start up our server. So let's see what went wrong. If you look at the first line, it says it is trying to compile our file and then it encountered an error. The thing I enjoy so far working with Dino is how developer friendly the error messages are. If you look at this message, it says uncaught permission denied while I was trying to access my local host on port 8000. Now it's clear for us as to where the error occurred. The most beautiful thing about Dino is it tells us what we can do to rectify this error. 
so we need to run our program using the allowed net flag simple right before we move on i just wanted to point out one more thing if you look at the very first line you see i have imported something called a serve from this weird looking file if you look at it more carefully i have imported the serve from one of dino standard http library and even then dino does not let the program run by giving it unnecessary permissions it asks us the developers if you want to go ahead and allow this program to run now let's real quick allow the program to run by doing something like this dino run allow net dino example 1.ts and if i hit return this time you see a console log in our terminal if i head over to localhost 8000 in my browser i can see hello world printed cool it worked i really quickly want to show you the same example in node.js and this time around i have written out pretty much the same example you saw in dino but using express now if i run node example 1.js you see straight up my node server starts and i can access it in my browser by heading over to localhost 3000 this was possible because node gave express which is a package that i installed the power to access my network even without notifying me although this may sound silly because we have used express for ages now and are so familiar with its working that we trust it so much but think of any third party library that you started using a week ago that is still new that does not have any stars or is not being actively developed in this case you are gambling by installing that package in your system dino removes this whole headache by securing packages and giving us complete control moving on to the next selling point dino offers typescript out of the box if you haven't already noticed my dino example 1 was a typescript file and i didn't do anything fancy here all i did to compile this file was run dino run dino example 1.ts and that's it it removes the overhead of installing a typescript compiler or even configuring our webpack dino offers typescript straight out of the box and it's wonderful if you think about it the next selling point of dino is it offers runtime api just like that of the browser to get to know more about it we could head over to the runtime api section so if you take a look at some of the apis here like set interval set timeout and fetch all similar to the browser api and that means your knowledge of those api as a front end engineer can be used to build apps or apis with dino and if you take some time and master dino's runtime apis you could as well easily pick up the browser apis this removes the knowledge barrier that node had set up previously well the next selling point which i like most is dino has a standard set of libraries for everything okay i oversold it i don't mean for everything they still are actively developing some of them but if you take a look at this code right here you see i have imported this serve from a standard library called server.ts which is present inside the http module so let's take a look at that once you are in dino's official website dino.land just click on the standard library section on the top once in there scroll until you see the http modules click on it and once you are inside the http modules we are searching for server.ts from this file is where we are importing the serve function which you saw in my code let me just real quick search for it yeah here it is and don't worry by the time you're watching this video if some of these line numbers might have changed since they are actively developing dino the code here might be changed frequently this exact function is what i imported into my code and ran serve by passing port 8000 into it don't worry too much about any of this right now we will be going into great detail on each and every file in our standard library if you don't want to miss out on those videos consider subscribing this gave us much control now unlike in node.js where we have to install a new package for doing such a simple task dino made sure i'm using one of the standard libraries and not installing some third party library these set of standard and audited libraries make sure that all the developers are using the same library 
and it makes life so easy to jump from one project to another and not worry about first understanding the underlying architecture and implementation of the code. The final selling point is it ships only a single executable file. Let's head back to our Dino example 1.ts and assume that we had some complex reusable logic in here and instead of writing it out over and over again in all of our files, we could do something like this. Let's say we bundle this file into something called Dino bundle.js which can be thought of as any other modules in Dino. In order to do that, I need to do something like Dino bundle Dino example 1.ts Dino bundled.js and hit return. Once that is done, if you look at the Dino bundle.js file this time, it is a very long, it is a specialized implementation of module loader. Now you can run this bundled file in the same way as any other normal module in Dino. Now you have a better understanding of the places where Dino takes over Node.js. You can decide if you want to use Node.js or Dino on your next project. My opinion after using Dino is, it addresses most of the doubts I had in Node.js. But that does not mean I will abandon Node completely. As a matter of fact, it is still in the early stages and the version 1.0 of Dino was released only a few days prior to the recording of this video. I didn't want to voice my opinion before I even got a chance to use it. Now that I have, I would say for some time I would still be using Node until Dino is mature enough for me to jump from Node to Dino. With that said, we have reached the end of the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, drop a like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.